Hello fellow responders. Welcome to this version of the Chemical of the Month training video. My name is Chris Aguirre. I work with Federal Resources and Hazmat IQ. Bring out your charts, the 2013 versions, and bring out your NIOSH guide that you got in the classroom. The chemical that we're going to run today is ethyl ether. So what do we do on step number one? Within 20 seconds, I go to chart two. I go down that left column that starts with aluminum. I go down to the E's and I see that the word ethyl is not there. So I say no. I go to the arrow that says no, which points to the above the line. I tell my crew, above the line, above the line. And immediately everyone knows exactly what are the hazards and what are the physical properties and the toxicology and what to wear and what meters to bring in. And then we go to chart number three, you see the last bullet and above the line says continue on chart three. Now we're gonna sharpen the response by going to the ether family and as we go to F, first we go to the flammable box up here at the top. It's in alphabetical order, it starts with a set. We go down to the E's and we see that three word F. So yes, it's there, we follow the, bo we follow the arrow down that says yes, and we try to match the word ether, and then when we find it, we tell our, our crew that we're running on audible. So the above the line becomes red 11. Notice that the word ether, furon, and oxide all mean the same thing, the red 11. Immediately we know what the hazards are, we know what meters we'll bring in, we know what meters we'll hit and what meters we'll not hit, and we'll know what to wear based on what your employer gives you. Some guys have turnout, some have level A, some have level B, some have level C, MOP, or multi-threat suits. So ethyl ether, above the line. Chart three, red 11. What are the hazards? Immediately, you know, flammability, toxicity, and form peroxides. If you notice if it forms peroxide, you just go down to red 12. This has the potential to be explosive. If it's flammable, we're wearing turnout. If it's toxic, we're wearing respiratory protection, SCBA. And if it forms a peroxide, you'll see that the last column says KI paper, KISS paper, bomb paper, an oxidizer paper that goes from white to blue when it's a peroxide. And we'll talk about that later in this video. After we've done that and called a red 11, then we got, we're now on the rig. We're responding to the call. And we go to the NIOSH guide, which is the reference that we give out in the class that you should have this for this training video. We go to page 140 in the NIOSH guide. We see ethyl ether. And then we start verifying what our size is up. Remember that when we set above the line, we said it was a gas, that the vapors were heavier than air that there's an LEL and a UEL and a flashpoint, that this polymerizes, that there's carbon and hydrogen that has an ionizing potential, that this is an acid gas that has fluorine in it, that's radioactive, that it's toxic in parts per million, that is water reactive and air reactive. That's the assumptions we make to stay safe. Now we whittle that size up by going straight to ethyl ether at the top of 140. We find out that it's a liquid. We reduce the hot zone. That's on chart six on step two. Remember what the hot zone were, 75 for solids, double it for 154 liquids, and double it again to 300 for gases. So we whittle down the initial hot zone to 150 feet. Remember what initial means. You're still on the rig responding to the emergency. You don't know if it's a rail car or a bottle. So that's going to dictate when you get there. Meters will dictate the hot zone. Right now it's 150 till we get there. Then we look at the molecular weight. We know that the molecular of air, of air is 29. The molecular weight of ethyl, uh, ether is 74. It's heavier than air. The flash point is 49 degrees below zero. Remember, when the flash point in the book is less than the spill temperature on the call, it's flammable now. So if you're going, it's an 80 degree day, and this is a spill on the ground. You take 80, divided by two, it's 40. At 80 to 40, you're looking at a peak temperature of the asphalt outside at high noon, about, a, about, a, about 120 to 140 degrees. This is flammable now. So immediately I'm telling my crew, turnout gear. If you don't have turnout, you're gonna have plastic. Remember when you go on red 11, go back to chart three, you go to red 11, you go all the way under level A or level B, your red light becomes 1% of the LEO, not 10%. 1% because 1% tells you it's flammable and you're in a plastic suit. As we continue down the chemical and physical properties, we see that the LEL is 1.9%. It is flammable. The UEL is 36%. 
verified, it's flammable, and the ionizing potential is 9.53. It means that if you have a multi-ray pro, if you have some type of a PID that has a bulb less than 10.6, you can see this. And since the vapor pressure is 440, these vapors are going to be, notice that this says colorless liquid. These are invisible vapors. There's, a, there's no way for you to measure the amount and quantify without this PID. If you look at, if you look at the LEL of 1.9 with a flash point of 49, it tells you to bring in the safe kit. If the safe, I got one right here. Later on, if you want, if you go to info at, at hazmatiq.com, we'll talk to you about the safe kit. We'll talk to you if you want to purchase one, if you want to see one. We'll have a salesperson go by there just so you can see it. But it's basically the instruments that take me home. Remember what our goal is. Our goal is that after our tour, we go home to our family and not in a box. Therefore, the grace of God go I. These are the instruments that see hazards that I can't see. And if you look at back and you go on chart three, those five instruments are at the very top, a radiation meter, F paper and pH paper, a temperature gun, a combustible gas instrument. They're all right here. So this is an instrument that I keep no, no different than a life pack, no different than a hotel pack. It's a pack that I keep on the tailboard for my guys to enter and do a size up on a hazard they can't see, but they can kill them. Now, now guys, look on page 140. If you look at the top, notice that there's only one oxygen. A peroxide is two oxygens, four oxygens, divisible by two, two, four, six, eight. How do you know that ethyl ethyl has become a peroxide? In other words, it's O2 instead of just O. If you look at the note and incompatibility, this is a major hazard. This hazard can kill. This will detonate. This is a chemical explosive device. If you look under the note, it says tends to form the explosive peroxide under the influence of air and light. And just, we're going to take liberty with the science to make the point. It starts forming peroxides at about the same days as it is to molecular weight. So we look at the molecular weight of 74. If we happen to go to a lab at a high school that's been there for a couple of years, which is more than 74 days, that bottle is peroxide till proven differently. Now, what instrument would see that? How do you see a peroxide? Well, we have one right here. This is a piece of paper that is white, that turns blue when it's a peroxide product. So if you have a, a PID that's giving you readings, an FID that tells you there's carbon and hydrogen, and this paper goes from white to blue, it's telling you that could be most likely explosive peroxides. Be very careful. If you look at the different levels of dress, depending on what your employer has and what you bring in, if you're, if you're in turnout gear, an SCBA, 10% of the LEL is your red light. If you look, if you're in plastic, you're looking at 1% of the LEL as your red light. Look at the red lights of the meters. As soon as you walk in there and you get 10% of the LEL, which I've responded on this call, so you can get 10% of the LEL because of the flash point. It's 49 degrees below zero on an 80 degree day in Miami Dade Fire Department where I worked. The only reason for me to be in that environment at over 10% of the LEL, because we don't even know what the conversion factor is yet, is if I have a line of sight rescue and the F paper doesn't turn yellow. The F paper turns yellow, it means even though I went to ethyl ether, there's something else in there that's invisible, given out fluorine that the paper changed at about 10 ppm, I get out and come back in level A with the papers inside and out, as long as the LEL stays at zero. If I'm in level A at 1% of the LEL, I'm out. This is, so right now we've talked about, and let's summarize. This is above the line. The you go to chart three, it's, red, it's a red 11. You go, you get on the scene, you get the safe kit. Depending on what your mission is, is it rescue or plumbing or some sensitive site exploitation is going to be what your red lights are. The only reason to bust a red light, line of sight, line of sight rescue if the F paper does not turn yellow. So guys, uh, may, this is the end of, the, uh, of this month versions of the chemical of the month. I wish you guys much luck and, and, and until we see you again, May all your lights remain green. Thank you.